ladies, gents, and everyone. It is Thursday, October 21st, and we're here to talk about this week's space and astronomy news. We've talked before about NASA's Lucy mission. Well, this weekend, it successfully was launched into orbit on board a ULA Atlas V rocket. Lucy's ultimate destination is the Trojan asteroids that share the orbit of Jupiter. Now, these are some of the oldest asteroids in the solar system and will give us insight into the evolution and formation of the solar system. Now, Lucy won't reach the Trojan asteroids until 2027, but in the meantime, we'll be getting several planetary gravity assists and we'll be flying by a main belt asteroid. Now, while the launch did go off successfully, it wasn't all sunshine. So Lucy is powered by two solar arrays, very large solar arrays that are each about seven meters in diameter. These solar arrays are furled for launch and then deploy and latch into place once the spacecraft is in space. Well, after the launch, the solar arrays did deploy. However, only one of the solar arrays actually latched into place. So the team had to investigate how much the other solar array actually unfurled and whether or not it was going to represent, you know, an issue for the mission. Basically, they found that the unlatched solar array is producing almost as much power as it would be expected to if it were fully deployed, and it is sufficient power to keep the mission operating as designed. So on Tuesday, NASA switched the Lucy spacecraft from this safe mode into cruise mode, and the rest of the mission should hopefully be unaffected. An exciting launch took place over in South Korea earlier today as the country tested its first ever domestically built rocket. The Nuri rocket is a three-stage rocket designed to deliver 1.5 tons of payload to up to 500 miles above the Earth. Now, the launch portion of the test was successful, but the rocket failed to deliver its dummy payload into orbit. It looks like the last stage of the rocket cut out about 40 to 50 seconds early, which meant that the payload didn't get enough velocity to achieve its target orbit. The root cause is TBD, but I'm sure they'll be trying to figure that out very quickly. Now, although it's a little disappointing that this test wasn't 100% successful, it still was a significant launch, and the Korean Aerospace Research Institute is planning its next test launch for May of 2022. NASA announced this week that the Crew-3 mission is targeted for a Halloween launch. Spooky. A very early Halloween launch as it's like 2 a.m. Eastern time. The backup launch window is November 3rd at about 1 a.m. This is a bit pushed back from earlier dates of October 23rd and 30th just to allow more time for spacecraft processing. The Crew-3 mission will take one ESA and three NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. For three of these astronauts, it will be their first ever flight, and it is the third flight for the mission pilot. This will also be the first flight for SpaceX's Crew Dragon Endurance spacecraft. After a short handover on board the ISS, the Crew-2 mission members will be returning to Earth sometime in early November. The Crew-3 mission will stay on board with three other astronauts to continue Expedition 66. NASA and Boeing held a press conference on Tuesday to discuss the status of the beleaguered OFT-2 mission of its Starliner spacecraft. As you recall, because we've discussed it a lot, <laughs> in the hours leading up to the planned launch, over half of the valves responsible for controlling the flow of oxidizer within the spacecraft were stuck and would not cycle between open and closed positions. Two of these 13 stuck valves have now been completely removed from the spacecraft and sent to the Marshall Space Flight Center for analysis. And the likely root cause of these stuck valves has been identified as corrosion due to humidity. When the oxidizer, dinitrogen tetroxide, interacts with water that got into the system, it creates nitric acid, which then can corrode the valves. Of course, it's no surprise that a launch pad in Florida in summer is going to have high humidity, and in fact, the spacecraft was designed to withstand these conditions, so this means something went wrong. Boeing is still working on getting this all fixed, and the target launch windows are now the first half of 2022. Back in 2019, NASA asked for ideas for its Astrophysics Explorers program, which covers small and medium class size missions. They received 18 telescope proposals, and of those 18, four were selected for further study. Now, after reviewing all four mission concept studies, NASA has made a selection. The next Explorers mission is COSI. COSI? COSI? The Compton Spectrometer and Imager is a gamma ray telescope that will detect high energy light from the explosions of massive stars. And this will help astronomers map out the chemical evolution and how chemicals are formed in the Milky Way and should give insight into the origin of positrons in our galaxy as well. The mission is expected to cost $145 million, not including launch, and is scheduled to launch in 2025. 
The International Space Station has been going strong for 21 years, and the US is committed to operations through 2030, but the ISS is well past its expected lifetime and is not going to last forever. Now, some countries like China are developing their own government space stations, but the US thinks the future of space stations is commercial. One company, Axiom Space, has already received NASA funding to help build the first ever private commercial space station, which is expected to begin launching in 2024. They're not alone. Just today, a new commercial venture was announced where three teams are coming together to build the first ever free-flying commercial space station. NanoRex, Voyager Space, and Lockheed Martin are coming together to create what they're calling StarLab. StarLab will be able to host four astronauts on board and will be used for science, research, and manufacturing for global customers, including governments, as well as tourism and other commercial and business activities. And the expected launch date is 2027. StarLab, as well as Axiom Space and another company called Sierra Space, are all looking to take advantage of a new NASA project called Commercial Low Earth Orbit Destination Project. Someday, our sun is going to expand, shed its outer layers, and become a white dwarf. Now, this process is very disruptive to planetary systems, and we've seen evidence, observational evidence, of this planetary debris in white dwarf systems. However, astronomers thought that it should be possible for planets far from a star to survive this destructive phase of stellar evolution, but such a planet had never been detected. Until now. A team of astronomers published a paper last week in Nature describing a microlensing system consisting of a white dwarf and a Jupiter-like planet located several AU from the white dwarf. This is the first direct evidence that planets can survive this destructive phases of stellar evolution, and it's a glimpse into what the future for Jupiter and Saturn in our own system could look like. The Earth, regrettably, is going to be toast. <laughs> Well, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy my content, I would really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and share with all your space-minded friends. Thanks again, and I'll see you again next week.